Hello and welcome back to Physics Safari. My name is Abhishek and today I'm going to do the projectile motion. I'm sure you must have gone through the previous videos of motion in one dimension because you're going to be finding a quite similarity between the motion in one dimension and this projectile. They are not very much different. Well, the motion in one dimension was all about when the body was moving in one dimension and now when we talk about the projectile, it is going to be motion in two dimension. But the best part is you can split this projectile motion, which is in two dimension into one dimensions. All good. And then we can apply all the formula, which we have discussed already in the previous one dimension motion. So this is not going to be a very much new to you. But I'm, uh, take my words, if you have done the motion in one dimension properly and uh, with all your dedications, you're going to find it very much uh, uh, easy and quite similar to what you've done before. All good? So, chalo, start karte hai. let's start. So, <clears throat> when you throw an object upward, like we have done in the motion in one dimension, it's going to go up and it, it is going to come down after achieving the maximum height where the v velocity becomes zero. So, it will go up it will come down. So this is the motion in one dimension without any doubt. All good? So the angle of projection, the angle at which we have thrown it was 90 degree. When I say angle of projection, okay, so th this is called the angle at which the projectile has been projected. So the object which has been thrown is called the projectile and the study of this motion is called the projectile motion. Okay, all good? Badiya. Now let us suppose rather doing this thing, doing this stuff, if I make the body move upward at a speed of velocity of u, making some angle theta with the horizontal. Let us suppose if I do that way, then the body would go up like this and it will come back to the ground in this way. This motion of the body is called the projectile motion and the body which has been projected is called the projectile. Let me repeat that again. But yeah. Good. Now, when I throw it vertically upward, time to go up was given as e upon g and time to come back also was given as e upon g. The maximum height, if you guys remember, which is how much? u square upon 2 times of g and total time of flight was given as 2u upon g. Well, this was the motion in vertical direction, in the vertical direction. This was the motion in the vertical direction of course over here if you look at this <clears throat> this initial velocity u has two components one could be written as along the x axis and one could be given along the y axis so this u could be written as what u x plus u y or you can say u cos of theta i cap plus u sine of theta g cap. So, this is writing, writing in the terms of the vector form. It's called written in terms of the vector form. <clears throat> now, this part is called the horizontal component. Well, this is, if, you if, if I take this as the x-axis, then this could also be given as horizontal speed or velocity. Well, that should be u cos of theta. And this, I can say the vertical velocity, which is u sine of theta. Why am I taking the uh, individual components and x and y because I can actually split this motion in the two dimensions which is uh, x and y respectively and we can deal with them one by one separately and uh, this this is not going to be a new term to you. Dikata, I'm going to show you that. So basically this entire motion of this object of this projectile could be seen in two dimension horizontal and the vertical. So if I talk about the horizontal motion that is along the x component and also we can talk about it in the vertical motion that is going to be your y component. So I could just write this as what? u x that is velocity in the x axis that is going to be u cos of theta and this theta could be anything 0 I mean like 30 degree 40, 37, 53 and uh, I am sure you guys are well versed with 37 and 53 degree angles because that is going to be used quite a lot over here in this topic. Okay, so u cos theta is going to be your horizontal velocity. At the same time, u y should be given as u sine of theta. But yeah, yeah, u y should be given as u sine of theta. 
if i neglect the air resistance if air resistance is ignored completely then do we have any acceleration along the horizontal path tell me any 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 acceleration along the horizontal path no we do not have so acceleration along the horizontal line is going to be zero on the other hand if i look at the you know your its velocity in the vertical direction there are going to be some acceleration in the vertical direction and that is equals to minus of g there is a acceleration due to gravity would be acting in the vertical direction all good now but yeah if i look at this vertical motion separately then don't you think for the vertical motion for for u y what is angle of projection theta is equals to 90 degree and for u x angle of projection for u x for u x theta is equals to 0 degree this becomes a normal motion horizontal motion uniform motion without any acceleration and this becomes a motion under the acceleration due to gravity already we have studied this in the one dimension motion so we do not have to worry about it you know we can split this and we can deal with this one by one so three major terms that you would be coming across in this topic and that is called as let me write it here three major terms the first one is going to be t that is called time of flight time of flight the second thing that should be h maximum height maximum height well not just the maximum height we can also find the find the height of the object at any point of time i'm going to discuss with you later but for now this is going to be your maximum height now one more thing i want to add over here at the maximum height the vertical velocity the v in the y direction is going to be zero or else if still it is having some velocity in the vertical direction the body will not stop it will keep on going in the upward direction but it is actually stopping you know it means the vertical velocity is zero it will only have the horizontal velocity which is v x and that would remain constant because there is no acceleration so that still is going to be how much u cos of theta and this is going to be constant for throughout the motion that will not change and the last term that we have is going to be range of the flight range of flight now so if i want to say the range well the range of the flight should be this distance from the starting point till where it lands back on the ground that is a range of the flight okay now if i talk about the horizontal motion the velocity is uniform time period if i could know i can find the range i can find the range okay now <clears throat> let us first understand look we can actually derive the situations i'm like these all values in various ways i'm going to try and link it with the vertical motion so that you guys will be more confident you know okay, the, okay fine this is nothing new it's all about the vertical motion you know and the horizontal motion you know i'm going i'm going i'm going to uh, uh, sort of relate that dekho simple se baat hai if you remember the time of flight how much u upon g when it was a vertical motion now tell me one thing what is the velocity in the vertical direction just u sin theta uy so time to go up should be how much uy upon g now what is uy uy is u sin theta upon g as simple as that game over so the time it will take to go up ascend time of ascending is how much u sin theta upon g so the total time of flight and you take the same time to descend also we all know that it's a very much symmetric thing so the total time of flight should be how much two times of t that could also be written as two times of velocity in the vertical direction by g or 2u sin theta upon g well that is your time of flight chalo ji so one thing we have got that is time of flight now let us look at the height of the flight height we know what u square upon 2g what is u that's u y so the height of the flight is going to be u square y upon 2g u square y upon 2g that should be how much u y is u sin theta so you can say u square sin square theta upon 2g so that is your height of the flight so i have got the second parameter which is height of the flight as well going forward if i know the time of the flight i can find the range chalo usko bhi we going to figure it out 
So the range should be how much? Let me write it here. Range should be horizontal velocity, which is u x into the time total time taken. Horizontal velocity is how much? U cos of theta. Time of flight is how much? 2u sine of theta upon g. If you look at this, u square, 2 sine theta cos theta is what? Sine 2 theta upon g. Well, that is your range. So basically, we have got range, we have got the height, and we already have got the time. Simple, right? So it is nothing new. You can simply use the concept that you've already learned in the motion in one dimension. Anna? Okay, let me tell you something more on this. I'm sure you guys have noted it down. If not, pause the video and you can note it down. Now, so if I just uh, erase this part and uh, I would just summarize it for your easy understanding. I would just summarize the all these three formulae. There are going to be quite a few questions which you can do directly based on these formulae. You can easily make it easily. Alright then. Okay. So let me summarize that. So here we have first thing. Time of flight. Time of flight is how much? You can, you can also write as 2uy upon g which is equals to 2u sin theta upon g. Point number 2. Height of the flight. That is u square y upon 2g, which is equal to nothing but u square sin square theta upon 2g. And number 3, that is range of the flight. That we have got as how much? u square sin 2 theta upon g. Uh, and this could also be written as what? This could also be written as ux into time of flight ux into the time of flight. So, you can written as u times of x into time of flight. It could also be written as what? Say this, ux, this part, u sin theta is uy into uy into 2 upon g, the 2 times of ux into uy upon g. So, one thing which I want to add it over here is that the range depends upon the time as well as the vertical velocity, whereas these two entirely depends upon the vertical velocity. They entirely depends upon the vertical velocity. So these two could be easily taken care by the vertical motion and this we need the concept of vertical motion as well as the horizontal motion over here. Now <clears throat> if these two depends upon the vertical motion, then maximum height would be achieved, maximum height would be achieved. If I throw the body vertically up, right? Now the maximum height, maximum height, maximum height would be achieved when we throw the object vertically up because it depends upon the vertical motion. And we know that when you throw the object vertically upward, it is going to go to the maximum height. Also, the maximum height depends upon completely entirely on the vertical velocity. So the maximum height is obtained when this theta becomes 90 degree. Because if theta is not 90, the body will go with certain angle. But if theta is 90, the body is going to go vertically upward. Right? So for the maximum height, theta should be 90 degree or you can say pi upon 2. Now, time of flight. Of course, it also depends upon what? Your vertical velocity. So this also is going to be maximum when theta is how much? 90 degree. So the time of flight for maximum time if you want the body to be in air then theta also has to be how much 90 degree which is pi upon 2. Now for the maximum range it not only depends upon the vertical velocity it also depends upon the horizontal velocity. Not only it depends upon the time it also depends upon the horizontal velocity. So this r gonna be maximum. Maximum r is possible when this part becomes maximum. And sine 2 theta becomes maximum when this 2 theta should be 90 degree. So two, it means theta should be how much? 45 degree or you can say pi by 4. So these are the quite small, small things you can note down. These are the quite small but important thing which you guys can note down. Which you can note down. Okay. <clears throat> One more thing I want to add. So today I am going to keep this video quite 
uh, short this intro of this uh, projectile. I'm going to deal with these in detail in the upcoming video lessons. हम लोग इसके बारे में और भी चर्चा करेंगे in the next video. Today just the intro of the projectile. All all good. Fair enough. Now uh, let me just tell you one thing. Let me just tell you one thing over here. Let's suppose I throw an object at some angle. Let's suppose theta. इसको मैंने थीटा पे थ्रो करा ओके नाउ दिस विल हैव सम रेंज दिस विल हैव सम रेंज नाउ कैन आई आल्सो हैव अनदर एंगल एट व्हिच इफ आई थ्रो द ऑब्जेक्ट एट द सेम वेलोसिटी सो लेट्स से इफ आई थ्रो इट विद द वेलोसिटी ऑफ यू ओके विद सेम वेलोसिटी विद सेम वेलोसिटी ओके कैन वी कैन वी अचीव द सेम रेंज can we achieve the same range for different angle different angle of projection is it possible let us investigate that that can we achieve the same range for different angle of projection but the initial velocity has to be same thoda dekhte hain uske bare mein let us see that <coughs> okay so if i let's suppose i throw the angle at certain other you know at same speed at certain other angle now this angle is going to be the complementary of this angle so the answer to this question is yes yes we can at what angle at the complementary angle at complementary angle at complementary angle at the complementary angle What do you mean by the complementary? When two angle add up to 90 degree, then both are called complementary of each other. For example, 30 uh, is the complementary of 60, 45 is the complementary of 45, 20 is the complementary of the 70, and so on, vice versa. देखते हैं, is it possible or not? Let us prove that. Let us see if it is possible or not. This angle should be how much? 90 minus theta. That angle should be 90 minus theta. थोड़ा इसको देख लेते हैं. Okay, why are you come here? Okay. <coughs> रेंज इज हाउ मच रेंज विल बी गिवन एज रेंज इज गिवन एज योर यू स्क्वायर साइन ऑफ टू थीटा अपॉन जी है ना देखो तो रेंज इज हाउ मच यू स्क्वायर साइन टू थीटा अपॉन जी टू जी सो लेट्स सपोज दिस इज अ रेंज ऑफ दिस वन आर वन एंड फॉर दिस लेट्स सपोज आर टू सो आर टू शुड बी हाउ मच दैट शुड बी यू स्क्वायर साइन ओके लेट्स सपोज दैट इज थीटा सॉरी टू थीटा सॉरी साइन ऑफ टू नाइनटी माइनस थीटा upon g that is going to be the range of the second one okay so if i if i just simplify it i'll be getting what u square 2 times 90 is sin 180 degree minus 2 of theta upon g we all know that sin 180 minus theta is theta sin theta itself we all know that so can i just say that range 2 should be u square sin of 2 theta upon g check this out range 1 and range 2 are both equal so yes it is possible to attain the same range for the <coughs> same velocity but the different angle provided those two angles should be the complementary of each other hai na okay now based upon this we can have so many different questions we can do all of those in the upcoming video lessons uh, for today we will stop ourselves to this introduction uh, get through it properly and then we're going to go to the next video lessons with some problems and we can also see the variations in the projectile motion all good so that's all for the day thanks for watching uh, and do like the video if you uh, like the way of teaching and the content also don't forget to share and subscribe with your friends for it will help them as well to learn something new all good so thanks i'm like till then keep learning and keep watching and also don't press to don't forget to press the bell icon for that you'll get the notifications of my latest update ठीक है जी मिलते हैं इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो थैंक यू सो मच सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो